Hello there. I'm very glad you made it. Sometimes our lives can be so busy with work or school or other responsibilities that we would want nothing more than to just hang out in bed alone and have no one bother us for as long as we wanted. So what if you were given the opportunity to do just that? How long would you stay there? A few hours? Perhaps a few days? Maybe even a few weeks? While this idea sounds like a far-off dream, NASA has made that dream a reality for many willing participants, even paying participants $18,000 just to stay in bed for anywhere from two months to three months straight. Movement was severely limited, though. Even sitting up or lifting your head was forbidden. While this sounds good on the surface, making decent money without doing seemingly anything, the participants are literally not allowed to leave the bed for any reason during that time, aside from perhaps certain infrequent and very short tests. Eating, bathing, and using the bathroom all in a bed with a slight tilt to it, making it so your head is lower than your feet and you continuously kind of slide into the headboard. So would remaining in bed day in and day out truly be a dream? Or would it be a nightmare? This specific NASA study gained a lot of attention recently when memes began circulating around the internet regarding it. These memes were often similar. They generally outlined what NASA was offering in the smallest amount of information possible, such as NASA is offering to pay you good money just to lie in bed. And people would comment wildly about how that would be the perfect job for them. And while many people were surely just kidding around, we can be confident that of all the people who have heard of the study, Plenty feel that the study would be like getting paid to be in paradise. So what is it like to take part in this lucrative NASA study? In 2014, the experiment attracted Andrew Ivaninsky, a laid-off artist who was looking for a chance to make money while taking time away from the stresses of adult life. With the opportunity to make five figures by lying in bed for 70 consecutive days, the opportunity seemed like the perfect chance to make some easy money. The first few days being trapped in bed, Andrew's spine began to hurt immensely and his head began to ache as well. This was all said to be normal, however the sleep deprivation he experienced as a result made him panicked. By day five, in a noteworthy amount of pain, Andrew felt like he wouldn't be able to complete the test, especially after his first bowel movement, which took days to occur. But once his spine and the rest of his body seemed to adjust, around a week into the test, it was everything that he hoped it would be. Andrew was allowed to play video games, watch TV, write to family members, or do almost anything, as long as he was lying down and wasn't picking up his head. Yet, after about four weeks, the novelty of a sedentary life began to wear off. The study took a toll on Andrew physically, with him losing 20% of his total blood volume, as well as experiencing a reduction in bone density and the wasting away of his muscles. This is due to what is summed up by the old saying as, move it or lose it. Your muscles, for instance, need to endure resistance, whether it be from exercise or just the natural force of gravity. The human body doesn't like unnecessary burdens, and it won't work unless it has to. So if you're not using the muscle, there's no point Point in the body supporting the muscle, and it may even feed off of the muscle for sustenance. This is because muscle is a metabolic burden that the body doesn't want to take if it doesn't need to. Muscle is also a fuel source when a person is starving to death, so this function of the body is actually a survival mechanism, as well as it is an act of perceived laziness. The change Andrew endured to his body was so great that at the end of the study, when he was assisted to stand for the first time in months, he experienced an increased heart rate, itchy skin, and heaviness in his legs, and collapse from being upright for only eight minutes. Andrew, just 70 days prior, was in great shape, often training daily for competitions. Lying in bed made him weak and feeble. So what's the point in making a person lie in bed for months and sacrifice their functionality? Well, it's not just to see what would happen if a person were to lounge around for too long, but to see the effects of microgravity on the human body to help astronauts who go into space for prolonged periods of time. Because the human body is accustomed to the pressures of gravity, when in a less weighted state where the body is experiencing less gravitational force, the composition of the body will begin to change. Because our bodies experience a similar 
particular state while lying in a particular position for prolonged periods of time, tests like this help scientists test the limits of the human body in this suspended state. And while scientists have been able to record the physical consequences of living this kind of a lifestyle, there are also psychological effects. Although there were other participants taking part in the study, Andrew began to feel a sense of emptiness as the days began to drag on. As the experiment went on, fewer and fewer researchers would tend to him, making him experience long periods of isolation, in which he said he began to experience a psychological change. He found that he began to become more irritable with his daily surroundings surroundings and routine, feeling that the staff that waited on him did not fully understand or empathize with his situation. Even more, he found that his isolation made him more reclusive. When he would interact with the researchers, his responses became more short and practical. As the weeks went on, his emails to loved ones became shorter and more scarce, as well as phone calls to his family. Even though he was allowed communication, his willingness to communicate diminished substantially from his place trapped trapped in that bed. To make matters worse, when loved ones were allowed to see him, contact was strictly prohibited due to safety reasons. When his girlfriend came to visit, she was instructed not to sit on the bed or even eat in the same room as him. As Andrew's situation became more and more apparent to him over the last few weeks, he began to experience moments of fear and anxiety, feeling as if there was no end in sight. Although he said there were positives to the experiment, such as the relaxation it offered at times, he often felt that he was, in a way, trapped and considering he was the final test subject to finish the experiment he spent the last half of his time during the study in almost complete isolation Compared to other examples in science, Andrew was actually quite different than your typical bedridden patient Andrew was young and healthy before you can even be accepted into the program, participants have to pass the Air Force physical to make sure that they are well enough to lie in bed for so long. Apart from these participants, most people who find themselves lying immobile in a bed are the sick or elderly. And although we know the physical ramifications of what happens when an immobile person lies without movement for long periods, with an extensive list of ailments such as blood clots, bed sores, and muscle weakness, we are also learning more about what being bedridden does to the mind. Along with the physical symptoms, those who experience long amounts of bed rest can often experience depression, anxiety, and tension. If a person is ill when they are confined to a bed, the stress of illness or injury can increase these feelings of emptiness and panic, turning what once could be considered a safe haven into one's own personal hell. Even more, if a person is subjected to long periods of alone time like Andrew was, they can begin to experience hallucinations. In a study conducted on isolation victims, almost all experienced some form of hallucination, whether hearing or seeing. Over time, they would begin to endure a loss of logical and verbal reasoning, affecting their attention and their perception of time. Seconds felt like hours, especially for those without a window to the outside world. During Andrew's time at the testing facility, he was not able to to see the sun for almost three months. If he had less contact with people who could tell him what time it was, when it was time to eat or when it was time to sleep, it would have been easy for him to lose track of the days, causing time to go even slower than he said he felt it had. Making matters worse, those that do experience isolation can often find that when they do return to the outside world, they have a hard time shaking their altered sense of reality, as well as the paranoia that plagued them in their loneliness. Perhaps the biggest reason scientists have concluded why isolation is so detrimental to humans is because of how we have evolved over time as a species, believing that we developed emotions to aid in cooperating among our early ancestors. Because of this hard coding in our systems to interact with others, a lack of interaction has often been shown to have adverse effects, causing the person to have a distorted sense of self when there is no one to bounce any kind of emotions off of. And though similar studies have been conducted over the past 15 years in the United States, none come quite as severe as its Russian predecessors. In 1986, 11 men between the ages of 27 and 42 were coaxed into a year-long study in which the subjects would be confined to a bed for 370 days. Once finishing the study, each man would receive a new car, which for the time was hard to acquire. Headed by physician and research cosmonaut Boris Murakov, the men would be allowed to partake in almost any activities, including exercise, as long as it did not require sitting up or standing. 
The men, who were divided into three groups during the experiment, not only faced the physical consequences of their bodies beginning to waste away in pain, but the study also changed many of their lives forever. Tensions in the room became so high that one man had to be moved to a different location. Despite this, the men became closer to the researchers and each other during their year in confinement, while becoming more and more distant to their families and loved ones. Many of the men who were married at the beginning of the experiment became divorced soon after, with one of the men falling in love with one of his researchers who tended to him. Although this study was not the first of its kind, it was the longest that has ever been conducted. So this is the part where I questioned you. I asked on my Twitter if you would participate in a similar three-month study for $18,000. Here's what you said. Thousands of you answered this week's poll with 38% of you saying you would absolutely take part in this test without an issue. 24% of you said that you would absolutely not take part. 35% of you said that you'd possibly take part but weren't sure. And the remaining 3% of you said that you wouldn't only take part, you'd take part for less money. Be sure to follow me on my Twitter at TheRobDyke and cast your vote in my weekly Question Everything poll. So what do you think? Is it worth the money? Or perhaps maybe you'd do it if it paid more money? Perhaps you would never do it at all because you're not willing to sacrifice your mind and body for money? You be sure to let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, check out the description below. There's a link to more Question Everything episodes. Be sure to give those a watch. And as always, remember, if you want to learn anything, you have to question everything. And you can subscribe to me now to learn more from me, no questions asked. And I will see you next Friday.